Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and this evening we have the latest on the heavy showers we have across the UK today. We'll then have a look at the brief um, maybe warm and dry period we're going to see in the middle of this week before unsettled weather does come back for sort of the 5 to 10 day time frame. Beyond that though we're seeing some interesting signs within some of the ensembles and operational runs of some of the models. The GFS operational run which I'll show you towards the middle of this video is actually going for a very hot and dry scenario for the sort of last third of August. So do stay tuned for that. It's going to be very interesting to see if that does come off and how much support that does get over the next few days. So do remember if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And do remember to follow me on Twitter as well. The link's in the description. Now again, we've had a lot of heavy showers with a few isolated lightning strikes. We have had thunderstorm warnings in, but I don't really think they're particularly warranted today. Um, looking at what really happened, it's generally just been heavy showers with just the isolated lightning strike. I sometimes do feel that the yellow warnings, for, at least for thunderstorms, do get put out a little bit too easily. Um, but I do suspect the Met Office are just trying to cover their back. So if we do get intense thunderstorm flooding in places, um, no one can turn around and say to the Met Office, you didn't forecast it. Um, so I just do think it's a little bit weird um, with these yellow warnings. But there were yellow warnings put in force briefly um, well, this morning for a sort of snap warning in the south of England and then in Northern Ireland. And we had that warning in Scotland as well. Well, we have seen a lot of heavy showers causing some flooding, of course. But I just don't really think it should have been called a thunderstorm warning, perhaps a rain warning. Um, but then again, it's because it's showery, it's very localised. So some regions have seen a lot of rain, some flooding, other regions have seen very little. So it's a bit of a, uh, a bit of a difficult situation there with the warning to put in force, but I'll leave that up to the professionals in the Met Office to try and sort of decipher you, to make it a little bit more clear for sort of the average person, just checking their weather app or sort of going through their Twitter feed, I think. So it would be a little bit easier if they did clarify that. Um, but I'll, I'll stop ranting about that, and we'll just have a look at the radar at the moment. You can see we've got the heavy showers moving through, and you can see they have got some heavy cores in there. Of course, no, not, not too many lightning strikes, but heavy cores nonetheless, bringing quite heavy rain. They are starting to fade away now, uh, but still a few active areas. You get, again, through Ireland, Northern Ireland, and then through Scotland as well. And they are all moving eastwards. Uh, and should be slowly dissipating this evening. So if we do have a look at the latest 24-hour uh, rainfall totals. This does give us a good indication of where we have seen the heaviest rain. You can see the banding across southern England. Where we saw some very heavy rain this morning, and then again we had banding of showers uh, all the way sort of from the southwest all the way through London into Essex, and then through East Anglia, and parts of Wales as well, and then of course Scotland, where we have seen that yellow warning, seen a lot of rain once again and then again in Northern Ireland and Ireland as well. Has been very localised, of course, you can see these areas that's in the yellow uh, and sort of orangey red colours have seen 40, 60 or maybe 80 millimetres. Areas seeing light, sort of uh, light green seeing only a few millimetres and some areas seeing nothing at all. So, yeah, very localised with these big rainfall totals, but where we have seen very heavy rain, um, you really will have known about it because it did rain quite a long time, especially in the south where the showers did line up. And we have seen some flooding and some flood prone areas once again. But it is looking a bit encouraging over the next few days. Things are looking a little bit hotter and drier. And if we do have a look at the weather warnings, these all expire today. So 11 p.m. for the Scottish warning, 9 p.m. So in only a couple hours time for the Northern Ireland warning. And then this wider warning in Southern England expires again at 9 p.m. Um, so no warnings for the foreseeable future, which is going to be a bit of a change. We've had warnings pretty much for the last week almost. Um, so no warnings coming up, and that's a good thing. It means things are going to be coming a little bit more settled. But perhaps towards the end of this week, we could start to see more warnings be put in force as we do have more unsettled weather returning. And again, we could see rain warnings, maybe even some wind warnings. And again, probably as we see shower activity um, reignite again, we could see some more thunderstorm warnings once again but that's sort of in the five to seven time seven day time frame for now things are looking a little bit drier for the next two three four days um especially further southwards and eastwards further northwards and westwards things may be still uh, being a little bit shaky a little bit cooler and more unsettled so if we do have now if we do have now have now have a look at that warm gfs run now, at the moment, we've got low pressure over the top of the country, bringing in sort of westerly winds, pretty cool um, outlook. And then we do get a brief ridge of high pressure build over. As this low is milling out in the Atlantic, it does pull up some briefly warmer air. If we do zoom into the UK, 
and you can see the 10, maybe 12 degree isotherm gets through, which could potentially give it temperatures up into the mid-20s, maybe even high 20s in a few locations. We do see a lot of sunshine, but we are close to low pressure, so it's always going to be a bit of cloud around, but it's going to be drier in general. Further west and further north, where we're more where we're close to that low pressure, there's going to be more showers, more cloud, and probably more rain, unfortunately. So it does look like there may be a brief respite in the shower activity, but before really reigniting once again. But further south and eastwards, it could be a couple of days where we see um, very little rain. Um, so if we do continue running on, that low pressure does eventually sweep through and things go unsettled once again with a lot of shower activity. And again, another low could be developing there coming in from the north, bringing cooler air in. But as we head towards day 10, um, you do see that we get a bit of a cut-off low developing, which would bring up some warmer air from the near continent, which is actually going quite hot towards sort of southeast Europe. We could be dragging a bit of warmer air there, but because it's a cut-off low, it could be sparking off some thunderstorms in the south. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. So now it's very small localised um, sort of cut-off low, not a major feature. So it's not guaranteed to form, we'll just have to really keep an eye on it. But that cut-off low does eventually just sit to our south and it allows the high pressure just to build up over, over the top of it. Now it would keep thunderstorms potentially in the south, but where we do see a break from that, we do start to put in some quite hot air in off the near continent, potentially getting the 15 degree isotherm through, which would give temperatures up to around 30 degrees potentially. Now this is sort of day 12 sort of time frame towards the last third of August, it's quite uncertain, but it's encouraging we are still getting operational runs like this. And you, if we're looking at the ensemble within a minute, you do see it has got a little bit of support within the ensemble members. It does go very warm, um, especially sort of 21st, 22nd of August, if we do zoom in, you see everywhere under around 9, 10 degree isotherm, far southeast getting 15, maybe 16 or 17 degree isotherm pushing in bringing very hot conditions, potentially in the far southeast. For the end of the run, low pressure does try and push in, could have a thundery breakdown with that. But a good, like, three, four, five days there where we've got quite hot air over the top of the country, and we could be seeing some very high temperatures for the last, sort of, third of August. And we have to really keep an eye on that and how much support that does get. I wouldn't rule it out at this stage, but I wouldn't say it's an absolute given, considering um, the amount of low pressure we've had over the last few weeks. Wouldn't be surprised if this high pressure never really manifests or gets pushed away or topples very quickly, as it is a bit of a Scandinavian high bringing in these sort of southeasterly winds. So it could topple very quickly, but we'll have to just really keep an eye on it. But for now, it's an encouraging run, showing things potentially getting hot and dry in sort of a heat wave um, sort of fashion. So if we do go through the ECMWF, you see again low pressure influence at the moment. We get that brief dry and warmer period. And then low pressure comes rumbling in off the Atlantic. And as we head towards day 10, we do have low pressure to our far southeast. But we do see a similar pattern to the GFS, which built into that Scandinavian high. We have high pressure ridging over to the north of Scotland, turning things quite dry in Scotland, in fact. Very unsettled, probably in the southwest. But if we did get this cutoff low to drop a bit further southwards, we would start to put in some very hot air. And you can see the 15 degree isotherm is actually moving in uh, across the North Sea. For, so for Scotland, Northern England, we keep going into quite a be decent heat wave where we do see the boundary of this hot air and the low pressure. It, we could see some big thunderstorms as well. So getting the best of both worlds for thunderstorm lovers and for hot weather fans. So interesting on the ECMWF there, similar time frame to the GFS showing the potential for a cutoff low developing, high pressure to our north and our east, pulling in east to southeasterly winds, bringing in some quite hot air, and you'll see the 19, maybe even 20 degree isotherm is out in Netherlands, which would give temperatures into the mid-30s if it got into England uh, and Wales and Scotland. So we'll have to keep an eye on how this does develop. As you, as you can see here, in the far south and southwest, be very unsettled, probably cool, a lot of cloud and heavy showers and thunderstorms around. So a slight shift in this pattern could be uh, could bring hot temperatures widely or could remain a lot of unsettled weather. So we'll just have to see how this does develop, but encouraging seeing both models showing a similar pattern. If we have a look at the GM, we haven't looked at this in this for a while, so we have been focusing on a lot of the short-term issues we've had recently with thunderstorms, but it's, again, a very good model, but I'd say it's probably the third best model that we, we would look at. It's uh, I'd say probably the best is the SMWF, then it's... Um, 
then I'd probably say, at the moment, I'd probably say GFS, a second and GM third, but generally the GFS does have some more wacky solutions in the longer term. So many people do regard the GM a little bit better than the GFS, but like the GFS, it goes all the way up to 384 hours, which is gives us some hope, especially in sort of winter time. We see sort of a beast from the east pattern come 14 days out. Um, but if we do concentrate on the now, we do see that low pressure do, does come through. And then we see this interesting little low pressure system, which actually stalls out in the Atlantic and doesn't form a cutoff flow. And instead, we just keep westerly winds towards day 10. So a little bit of a contrast. We still have heights rising to our north. But the Azores High tries to push into the southwest. Now, it would things turn things drier, especially further southwards. Further north, it's more unsettled. And it would mean temperatures are a little bit lower as we do have westerly winds coming in. You can see 10 degree ice firms to our south. So we're not even getting up into the 10 degree um, air at 800 dhpa. So a lot cooler there on the GM. But again, a similar pattern, just a subtle shift in where that low pressure sits. Um, so we'll have to really keep an eye on it over the next sort of couple of days. As if it does start to come off, seeing that cast off load develop to, towards the south of England and sort of the Bay of Biscay, we could be looking at a lot of hot and dry weather for some, and even some thunderstorms, and actually some powerful thunderstorms if we do get that real hot and humid air in. So we'll have to keep an eye on it, um, and fingers crossed for all of those hot weather fans, we do sort of see this come off. So we do have a look at the GFS Ensemble, which you can see, the pattern well reflected. You can see if next day is sort of going to be cooler than average. Then we go up, get a big pickup over sort of 12th, 13th of August, where we do see temperatures um, get widely around the mid-20s in southern areas, as we do see a pickup in 850 HP temperatures, before it drops to around average once again. A lot of scatter around as it's sort of westerly winds, but nothing going really hot or nothing going really too cold either. As we head into the longer term, you see a lot more scatter develops. Not an absolute deluge on the ensemble members. So of course, some are showing some dry weather in the south. But still, a lot of unsettled weather will be around with a lot of showers, especially further northwards and westwards. But as we head towards the 21st, 22nd of August, you can see that GFS operation run going very hot, getting up towards 14, 16, or maybe a tad higher at 850 HPA. Now you can see it's got some, some support from about five or six other ensemble members. So about a, a fifth of all ensemble members are going for this very hot pattern. Some are going for it and then cooling down a little bit. Others are just generally a bit above average. You can see, though, some are going a lot below average and some are just around average as well. So it's not a certain, it's not given that we're going to be seeing a very hot weather towards the end of August. But at least it's encouraging that we're still seeing it in the model output and there has got some support um, so we'll just have to keep an eye on it over the next few days and hopefully we do see something a little bit more hot and dry come off as we've had a very, very unsettled last few weeks and last few months really in general. If we have a look at the two metre temperatures, you can see over the next few days temperatures are going to be in a bit of a rise in London, especially getting up to maybe 24, 25, 26 degrees by the middle of this week before cooling down as low pressure does come in back in off the Atlantic with highs around 20 degrees once again. In the longer term though, you can see with that GFS operational one, highs are getting around 25, 26, 27 degrees and I suspect it would be even higher than that if we did see those 850 HPA temperatures come off. Simply because the GFS is a low resolution model, doesn't quite forecast microclimates as well. So I'd always, when looking at the ensembles and the raw model data from something like the GFS, especially this far out, where it doesn't, uh, it's not particularly high resolution, I would always add a few degrees really to the temperature. So, uh, in summer at least. So we'll just have to keep an eye on it, but it's looking, looking like we do have some hope. So if we do lastly have a look at the UK Met Office run. Now, we we'll just have a good precipitation and then look at the temperatures over the next sort of five days or so. You can see a lot of showers around at the moment, slowly dissipating tonight. A few showers around again tomorrow afternoon, but it does look like they're going to be fairly sort of scattered, generally quite widespread, not too many in the south and sort of in the Midlands, and not too many in Ireland or Northern Ireland, mainly across eastern areas, northeast um, England into east Scotland. Um, where we could see quite a few showers. But again, they don't look particularly heavy and they do look pretty scattered, so it doesn't look like it's going to be an absolute deluge anywhere. Those do eventually sort of fade away. In eastern Scotland, though, sort of Aberdeenshire, we do see those showers maintain into the afternoon. They do become a bit more widespread, so we'll have to keep an eye on how that does develop. Again, very localised, but could be a few issues with that. And then as we head towards Wednesday, things are looking a bit drier for at least England, um and eastern Scotland, you see that weather fronts do push in, quite a wet day for Northern Ireland, um, especially in the morning, 
Then parts of Wales, northwest England potentially, and in into western Scotland do see some rain coming in. But the weather front really does stall as it heads eastwards and sort of fit, fit, um, sort of fades away. And we do see for many areas of England, eastern um, England as well, and then parts of Northern Ireland and western Scotland throughout Wednesday afternoon. Things are generally quite dry before the weather front does eventually move through through Thursday morning. With a lot of drizzle, probably some cloud, but then even through Thursday, things are looking quite dry in the south. For many areas of England, Wales, even into northern England, really only Scotland starting to see the big showers return. And then widely, by Friday, we're seeing big showers return a bit further southwards through Ireland, northern England. And then we would expect by this weekend, more showers to start taking off in the south. Again, the south is always closer to high pressure, so at this stage, does it look like most of the showers are going to be concentrated further northwards. But, as ever, with a low-pressure scenario, there's always going to be uh, showers around, and you can't really ever say um, it's going to be definitely a dry day. So if you do look at the latest temperatures, so if you do run through to Tuesday afternoon, you can see temperatures getting at around 23, maybe a little bit higher in a few locations tomorrow afternoon. By Wednesday, we do see widely temperatures get again to around 21, 22, 23 degrees, feeling quite pleasant if we do see some sunshine around under more cloud uh, and with a few showers and some more rain around in Scotland, Northern Ireland, maybe only 16, 17, 18 degrees, and then over the mountains, maybe only 12 or 13 degrees. So feeling all decent in England, and parts of Wales, and the eastern, uh, eastern parts of Northern England as well. And then through Thursday afternoon, things are looking again pleasant, further south and east, which is maybe 22, 23 degrees, again, couple degrees above average this time of year elsewhere a little bit cooler and then by friday once that cold front is swept through temperatures going to be down maybe a degree or so with a high of maybe 21 22 and then by saturday things potentially still quite warm in this far east so 23 24 degrees as we do have warmer air coming back once again from the southwest but still probably more of a shower risk around so although temperatures may be a tad higher it's less likely to be completely dry all day so we'll just have to keep an eye on that but it does look like for many areas in england and wales this is going to be the last of the massive heavy rains um for at least a few days and then we'll have to keep an eye on what's happening sort of wednesday thursday or thursday really for many areas in terms of that weather front moving in and how quickly it does dissipate and then beyond that what happens with the showers but at least we have got hope towards the last third of august things could potentially turn a bit warmer and drier and hopefully we do see that soon so anyway thanks for watching hope you enjoyed subscribe if you're new i'll see you again for another video soon